Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to get more website traffic to your website with Google Ads. Now, Google Ads is a great resource if you're just starting off your website or if you want to get website traffic to your website because you want to promote a special service or product or you just want to have more readers on your blog and website. I will warn you ahead of time, this isn't the cheapest method of getting traffic to your website because there's a lot of free ways you can also do that, but that's going to be an upcoming video. So if you want to hear anything about SEO and getting organic traffic to your website for free, make sure to subscribe down below. But nonetheless, let's continue in today's video with setting up Google ads for website traffic. So as you can see, we've entered into Google ads and here we can go into website traffic as the first thing for the setup of our website. So these ads are basically pretty simple. You click website traffic and then you get to select whether you want search display um, ads. Now search ads are the ones that are most popular for website visits usually and that's because you're trying to get them to show up when people are googling a certain term. For example if we're a shoemaker and we want to sell shoes um, or if we are a blog about SEO, then we would want people when they're searching up SEO to have our result being the first one. There's a lot of information out there about the trustworthiness or how people perceive advertised results, but nonetheless, this does get you results and it does get the right people to click on your website, gets you a super targeted audience, meaning that not only are people coming to read it, but they're actually the right type of audience. We're gonna go ahead and select a search campaign and then we're going to enter our business's website. If you guys didn't know, I also have a website. If you want, you can go read some tips on there, but I also do make videos here. So the preference is yours and it is creategrowgo.com. Now my website has a lot of information about how to get traffic to your website, how to um, run an online business and basically I give information that has worked for me. So it is not just entirely subjective of course, it is quite objective in terms of industry standards and what works well for everybody else. But I want you guys to know that um, if you want to check it out you can. Okay enough self-promotion, let's press continue and go into further into the setup. Um, then again here we'll get into the campaign name. Now you guys know I'm very peculiar about this and I've talked about this in my previous videos that you can check out. I like to name my campaigns in a simple way because if you have multiple going to multiple different websites or different pages on your website, then you're gonna wanna know which one is doing how it's performing and you're not gonna wanna sort through them every single time to figure out which link it's leading to. So this one is going to be leading to our homepage because that's a website we typed out and I'm just gonna call it homepage right here but of course if you have multiple of these then you could um, put an underscore and then um, write create grow go or something like that then it's going to ask us which networks we want to show our advertisements to so i particularly want to um, show only on the search network not on the display network um, and this is because i want only people that are actually genuinely searching for something to see the advertisements for my website. For the display network, it is people visiting websites um, or watching videos related to your topic, but it can be a little less related to your search terms. Um, and this isn't any information to withhold from doing display network ads, but in my personal experience, definitely I would exclude them, especially if you're just testing it out. Um, and a little warning from Google, don't miss the opportunity to reach more people across 3 million sites and apps. Of course we want to do this, but for right now, we're not doing it. Okay, um, then you have more settings. If you want start and end dates, make sure if you're dealing with a particular budget that you do have your start and end date once you get to that. Um, but for now, we're gonna hide these. We want to select a location. So let's say we're doing the United States. Um, and if your website is more localized, you can pick down to the specific city or perhaps county in which you're located. You can also pick the languages in which you're advertising. So we're doing the United States um, as our location of advertising. So um, our website is also available, say in Spanish, we could select that as well, um, have English and Spanish, which are two widely spoken languages in the United States. Now here we get to the point where we can select audiences. Um, you have the option here to either search up some keywords and get proposal, proposal audiences, 
or if you've previously used this, you can save your audiences um, that you've generated by the visitors on your website or that you've created previously. Um, one of the things we're gonna do now is try to go to the browse section here and answer or try to find out some things about who our audience is, what their interests and habits are, what they're actively researching or planning, etc., etc. So all of these give you many opportunities to really target the specific people that you want visiting your website. As we said, that's the whole point of this. But um, this is where you would need to have some knowledge about who your users exactly are. And so I like that they have these questions and points here because it really does give you the points that you must have answered before you even decide to do any advertising, which is who is the audience that I want visiting my website? Um, what are they interested in? What are they researching? Um, have they previously been in touch with my business? So do I wanna target the people that have previously had a contact with my website and bring them back to make sure they complete some sort of purchase or activity? Um, or uh, there's um, combined audiences, audience combinations that we'll get into in a little bit. So detailed demographics, are they married, education, home ownership status? Really look into these and dive deep. Right now, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna select random ones just to demonstrate to you guys. Um, so to see how specific it can be, parents of infants zero to one years old, and then what their habits are, I'll say banking and finance, food and dining, but you can get deep into these and figure out exactly what it is that your audience should be. Very cool option from Google. Um, so now down here you have audience targeting and settings for this campaign, you have the option to do targeting. Uh, and this is the to narrow the reach of your campaign to the selected audiences with the option to adjust the bids or observation to not narrow your campaign, but to adjust the bids on selected audiences. So the observation one is recommended because it allows you, especially if this is the first time setting up an ad, to see which audiences out of the ones that you've gone into here, so whether it's parents, people interested in food and dining or banking or whatever it is, which ones are performing better. And then after that, you can select to put higher amounts of budgets or higher bids on those audiences to see if they end up being the ones actually converting on your website or being the ones that really have a genuine stickiness to your brand rather than the ones that don't. And after you've done all of that and figured this out on your own, uh, you can get into setting up the budget. So we're just gonna put a random number here, uh, but this is how much you want to spend each day. So note down, if you have a monthly budget, just divide it by the number of days, and Google will usually not go anywhere past that budget. This is especially useful if you're working for some company or your own company, and you just want to make sure that you don't exceed the amount that you were planning for advertising. Um, and then on the bidding section, which was mentioned up here for the target and bid, you can see that um, it asks you what you want to focus on. So conversions, conversion value, clicks, uh, or impression share. Basically, we want people to click on our ad, but Google allows you to optimate, optimize for conversions as well. Meaning if our website was that shoemaker one that I mentioned, and you want to actually make sure that the people that click on it are gonna be the type of people that would get a conversion on your website, which means buy something from it, or sign up to your course, whatever it is, then you can optimize for that as well. Um, or if you just want traffic, then clicks would be the best recommended one. Now keep in mind that all of these have different costs because your conversion obviously is gonna bring you a much higher value, um, even a monetary value, whereas the clicks is just going to bring you traffic, which um, meaning that they're gonna be a little bit cheaper than the conversions or quite a bit cheaper, but that's because they don't guarantee that the people coming to your website will be the ones that convert. So it's sort of your calculation here to make which one you want to go for. Um, and these are the recommended ones, but I we're gonna go with clicks because my website is a blog and all I want is readers to my blog that we specifically targeted. Okay, um, now we can do the bottom part right here, which is adding extensions to our advertisements. Um, and this is if we want to add different site links. For example, um, I created my homepage and when the advertisement shows my homepage, it can have little other pages underneath it. For example, other than my homepage, we can have the news section or the business section also shown in the advertisement. Um, if you have a business that people can actually call, you can add your call extension down here 
or um, a call out extension, which is more information about your business to be linked directly in the advertisement. So if you're um, a dentist and you want people to call and ask about an appointment or schedule appointments, then you could definitely add these. I mean, that's just one example that I came up with, but I trust that you guys can see if this is appropriate for your business or your website or not. And we're going to save and continue. All right, now we're coming to setting up the ad groups. This is the exciting part. Um, ad groups, just like campaign names, I would name them more specifically to what exactly it is that you are going to put into this different ad group. Basically, ad groups are subsets within your campaign, and they would be focused on either the specific keywords or the specific target groups. So you can have one campaign targeting different section target groups. For example, for mine, I would do my separation into one ad group being all about SEO keywords, a second ad group being all about business related topics or growth and marketing related topics. A third one would be all about advertising on Facebook or Twitter, whatever sections I have in my category. And this is good for testing. Number one, you can see which ad group performs best, which one brings you a the stickiest and highest optimizing, highest converting audience. Um, and so we're gonna name this one SEO. And as you can see, I've put in my website here and Google already has some suggested keywords for me, um, such as SEO, SEO company, what is SEO, SEO services. And you should have as many as possible um, in this ad group. So come up with your own. You can search your keywords or you can use your suggested ones. Basically, the more you have that are actually relevantly related to what people should be searching for, the better it is for you. So we're going to add a different ad group just to continue with this example. It's going to be online business. Oops. And it can be, um, okay, let's look at their suggestion. Online marketing companies, internet marketing companies, um, agency. Basically, this is the example that I'm giving you. So use them specifically. I'm using mine as a separation of these, but as I said, you can differentiate what you want to test or what you want to focus on and then add the different target groups so that you can compare target group one named SEO and target group two online business and see which one has a higher performance and which one you can shut off, which one you should invest more money in in the future. Um, you know, taking into consideration that they act, that actually bring you some sort of results. So we're going to save and continue. And the best part and my favorite part of it all, you get to create advertisements. Um, this is very similar to the universal app campaigns if you saw that video but basically here is where we can get into the creative part which is writing out headlines that are going to be shown to people when they search up for keywords that we had in the previous setup so for the ad group setup so seo learn all about it please don't take my advice on writing these out i'm just doing these for an example but this is what our ad would look like if this is all that I left. And we have the option of adding a description as well. So learn all about it on our website. And you can have many different variations of these, but basically what Google also helps you out with is it tests out the different headlines that you write and the different descriptions that you write for your advertisement. And it will end up showing the most relevant ones or the ones that get the most clicks on them. So it does this for you and it helps you out after, of course, you've set up the different ideas. This is where you should experiment. This is where you should try out all the potential different headlines and creative ways that you can attract people's attention. And then after you've done that setup, and this is also an upcoming video, you are able to see which ones are performing the best and then you can pick out which ones to stop putting money into or which ones to change and which ones are doing really well. So you can invest a little more into them and then track your performance and see if that helps you out even more. Again, another option down here. Uh, let's see if we can go forward. Ooh, policy violation, what have we done? Oh, okay, HTTPS. Yep. 
Save and continue. Okay, we're getting a little stuck. But basically, this is where it would end before we go into billing, where you just fill out your credit card information and you can start running your ad. Um, the problem that's showing me up here is that it's saying that um, there is a punctuation problem. So I have an exclamation mark. So if I just deleted that, it should solve it. Um, there is rules that you can read about. And so you don't make mistakes like me. I've done this a hundred times and I always get carried away. But basically if you use inappropriate punctuation where it doesn't belong, like exclamation marks won't really help. And then we should be able to continue. Now. I just want to get to that page. Ah, yes, finally. And we are at our billing page. So here's, you would just set up your billing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and I hope it was helpful. If you guys have any further questions, please make sure to leave them down in the comments below. As you know, I always answer my comments no matter what your question is related to this. Uh, and if you want to learn a little bit more, you can always go down below to my website and read about all of these topics. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.